So we know that if we differentiate the natural log of x, we just get one over x, okay? And likewise, if we differentiate the natural log of some function of x, okay, then we get the derivative of that function of x divided by that original function of x, okay? Now, why does that help us when we anti-differentiate? Well, because anti-differentiation is just going the other way. So for example, if we were asked to anti-differentiate what one on x is, with respect to the variable x. Well, we're asking ourselves, what is this the derivative of? And we can see from here that one on x is the derivative of the natural log of x plus c. Okay, likewise, over the right-hand side here, if I had to anti-differentiate uh, the derivative of some function divided by uh, the function itself with respect to the variable x, well, what is this the derivative of? This is the derivative of the natural log of that function f of x plus c, okay? So these two formulas are gonna be really important uh, when it comes to anti-differentiating uh, the natural logs. So let's have a look at a, an example. So we'll come down here. First of all, let's look at uh, anti-differentiating 2x divided by x squared plus one with respect to the variable x, okay? so. Focusing in on this formula here, we can kind of see a similar relationship, i.e. if I let f of x be x squared plus one, and I ask myself, well, what is the derivative of that? Well, the derivative would be two x. And that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing my f of x on the bottom, and I'm seeing my derivative of f of x on the top. And that is also exactly what I see in this formula here. So we know that the answer to this question would be the natural log of whatever the function is. So the, our f of x, which is the bit on the bottom here, the natural log of x squared plus one plus c. So that would be uh, how we would anti-differentiate that example. If we have a look at another one, very similarly. Uh, so we will anti-differentiate this time uh, 3x squared take 4x divided by x cubed take 2x squared plus 4 with respect to the variable x. Okay, so once again, uh, we see that we have some function on the denominator, which is our x cubed take 2x squared plus 4. And if we take the derivative of this function to be 3x squared take 4 x, that's exactly what we're seeing on the numerator. So we've got some function on the denominator here, and the derivative of that function is written on the numerator. Therefore, by the rule, uh, if we anti-differentiate, we get the natural log of that function on the bottom, x cubed, take 2x squared plus 4, and we add our constant plus c. Okay, And of course, that's the formula that we're seeing up here in the top right. We'll do another one now where it gets slightly trickier. Okay, so question three. What if we wanted to anti-differentiate 4x squared take 3x plus one, all divided by x with respect to the variable x? Well, if I have a look at the function that I've got on the bottom here, which is x, I most definitely do not have its derivative on the top, okay? So perhaps there's something else that we need to do. And in fact, there is. We should break this up uh, into a series of different integrals. So we can write this as the antiderivative of 4x squared over x take 3x over x. I'm breaking this down into a whole bunch of different functions now. Okay, and by the uh, linearity of integration, I can integrate each of these terms individually, okay, or anti-differentiate each one individually. So I'm looking at anti-differentiating. Now, if I simplify these fractions, I've got my 4x, take my 3 plus my 1 on x with respect to the variable x. Now, if I anti-differentiate my 4x, I just get a 2x squared. If I anti-differentiate my minus 3, I just get minus 3x. And here's the trick, if I anti-differentiate one on x, okay, that is the natural log of x, i.e. if I differentiate the natural log of x, I'll get straight back uh, to one on x, which is what I need. And of course, I've got my plus c on the end there. Okay, we'll have a look at another one now, uh, another common example that you'll sort of come across. So if I have to anti-differentiate eight x divided by 
2x squared plus 1 with respect to the variable x. Let's have a look at our function on the bottom. So f of x on the bottom here is 2x squared plus 1. And let's have a look at the derivative of what that would be. That would be 4x. And I don't have 4x on my numerator. Now, it's okay, we can fix it. Um, what I do have on my numerator instead is I've got two lots of that 4x that I require. So what I mean by that is it makes more sense if I write it. What I've actually got here is I can write this as the uh, antiderivative, of course, with respect to the variable x. I've got my function on the bottom, but what I would really like on the top here is a 4x. Because if I could have my 4x on the top, then I can just use my quick formula that allows me to put it straight into the natural log uh, uh, function. However, I need to rewrite 8x. Well, that's the same as two lots of that 4x. And I can bring that too out the front of my integral. So I can actually write this problem like so. So this problem here and this problem here are identical. Okay, now the reason that I would prefer to write it like this down the bottom is because now I have a function on the bottom and the derivative on the top. So this is equal to two lots of the natural log of 2x squared plus 1 plus c. Okay, and we'll probably write that as just 2ln 2x squared plus 1 plus c. All right, we'll do another example and see if we can make some more sense of it. So... Question number five, anti-differentiating 5x plus 2 divided by 5x squared plus 4x minus 9 with respect to our variable x. Let's look at our function on the bottom, our f of x, which is 5x squared plus 4x minus 9. And then let's look at what the derivative is, 10x squared plus 4. Now, if I had a 10x squared plus 4 on my numerator, I can use my uh, my formula and I can go straight to the natural log part as my answer. However, I don't. I've got, oh sorry, just 10x, not 10x squared, 10x. Um, but I don't. If we have a look at my numerator, I've got 5x plus 2. Okay, so what do we do? Well, 5x plus 2 looks awfully similar to 10x plus 4 in as much that I could rewrite this problem as a half of 10x plus 4 because I'd like to have a 10x plus 4, that would be good, but I've only got a 5x plus 2, so I've got a half of 10x plus 4, divided by my 5x squared plus 4x minus 9. Why do I do this? Because I can bring my half out the front, and now if we have a look at what we've got, I've got a function on the bottom, and I've got its derivative on the top, okay, and this is with respect to the variable x. And that allows me to just go straight to the formula and go the natural log of my function on the bottom, my 5x squared plus 4x minus 9 plus c would be my answer there. Okay, and you can see we've got our half out the front now. Finally, I want to have a look at one more, which is a trigonometry based one. So let's say that we have to find the uh, antiderivative of the tan of x with respect to the variable x. Okay, now I can rewrite a uh, tan of x as sine of x over the cosine of x. Now that's going to be really important because I know that if I let f of x be my cosine of x, let's have a look at what I've got on the top. So if f of x is cosine of x, then the derivative of that would be negative sine of x. Ah, but on the top, I've only got positive sine of x. So I need to rewrite this as the antiderivative of negative, and then I need my negative sine of x, because that gives me the positive sine of x that I've got, but allows me to kind of have the negative sine of x that I need, divided by my cosine of x with respect to the variable x. And I can then bring my negative one out the front here. So I end up with negative, the antiderivative, of negative sine of x over the cosine of x with respect to the variable x. So we've transformed this problem into this problem. These are identical, but we've written it like we have down the bottom because the derivative of cosine is the negative sign that I have on the top. So that means my answer is negative times by my natural log of cosine of x, that function on my denominator plus c.
So hopefully that helps explain uh, how we can anti-differentiate the natural log, okay? And the way that we can manipulate our equations uh, to assist us in anti-differentiating them.